Hi! Hi everybody! It's me, Jennifer from Little Metal Foxes. I just want to do a quick catch up with you guys, quick tool tool tip, and um, get you knowing about what's going on this weekend. Um, we've got uh, Little Metal Foxes all over the place this weekend. We're very excited. Um, I'm heading to Las Vegas, so if anybody is in Las Vegas, or um, know some good uh, jewelers down there, some one-of-a-kind people that do some really lovely stuff, please do uh, DM us and let me know. I'd love to meet with them and say hi. Um, but uh, yeah, but I'm gonna be visiting Las Vegas this week, so give me a shout if you've got some uh, connections down there or uh, some jewelers that are awesome. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, so yeah, we've got... Uh, and Helen is in transit as well. She is on her way back to London, and she's going to be visiting some jewelers there as well. So we've got some uh, things we're going to be adding with uh, uh, foxes on the run here uh, <laughs> with uh, visiting shops and saying hi and doing some interviews with other people. So that's coming up. But uh, the tool tip that I have today, just real quick tip, is keeping track of your stuff um, and being able to price your stuff and kind of see where things are, do some sketches, keep it all together. There are lots of ways you can do this. I just finished a production class. We had a great time talking about uh, getting inspired, uh, where you get your ideas from, how to simplify your design and you know keep it yours, but make it in a way that you can make money, um, but also pricing work and keeping track of those things. So uh, recently, I just found this book on Amazon and I wanted to share it with you because it's really good. Uh, Jewelry Maker's Log, sketch, uh, sketch Ideas, Finalized Designs, Track Time, and Materials. And this is, so, oh, hey Chris, how are you? Um, Chris, uh, if you all haven't seen, by the way, the new Peppy uh, uh, Haymaker saw, it's, uh, well, it's the Lion Punch Forge uh, Haymaker saw, available from Peppy Tools, the new anodized colors. They're awesome! I just got mine in fuchsia pink, violet colored, and I'm very excited. So um, anyway, I'll do an unboxing when I get that so that you guys can can see the uh, the new Haymaker uh, colors because they're fabulous. Um, anyway, so yay Chris, I'm looking forward to it. But um, for keeping track of your time and materials, a lot of metalsmiths do this in a notebook or a sketchbook and have notes all over the place. And there are some great ways to sort of keep that stuff together and um, do work uh, that you can, you know, keep track of. So if you are looking for something like that, again, I, I really recommend this book. And it gives you a place for um, pictures, for sketching, because this has a graph uh, pattern on it. But you can sort of go down and put your materials, your time, your other notes. So this is fantastic for... Um, uh, helping you keep track of that and later on pricing it. But sometimes you sort of, you know, you let pieces go and you don't remember, you know, what they were made of, how you did it, and um, this will give you a way to keep track of that. So if you have to do a repair or replace a stone, you know where you got the stone, you know how much it cost, you know why you priced it that way, and so on. So this has got, you know, loads of pages in it, and it even has a table of contents, which I thought was kind of, kind of nice. Um, so, you know, um, yeah. So it's available on Amazon. Um, that's where I got it, and it wasn't very expensive. Um, I even got one for Julia, so we could use them um, for her Sparks class and for my production class. But um, jewelry making, jewelry maker log available on Amazon. So check that out. So um, the the thing I would highly recommend, though, is that if you're not using this, do use something that you can um, use it. I a lot of times we'll just put everything on a Xerox machine as I'm constructing it or take a photo of it, and that way I can print it out and make notes of the parts and the piece and keep them in a binder. So that works really well when you've got pieces that are in progress and you can sort of keep those pieces together in a way and keep track of what you're doing on the piece. Um, I always try and uh, take those uh, stages so that I can sort of go back and, and see if I need to recreate something or fix something, or again, you know, if something breaks and I have to fix it uh, or replace something, I, I know what's there. I know where I got the stones. I know, um, you know, even if it was years ago, I've got a record of it. So, and why I priced it that way. 
So this gives you a really good way to do that. And, um, but I, I recommend you do that and take things, or even if it's like a, like a, it, one of the science journals or logs, those work really well too, um, just to keep your notes all in one place. So that works really well. So jewelry maker log, that's good. And keep track of your pieces on Amazon. So I love that one. Um, so yeah, Chris, when I get back from Las Vegas and do my unboxing, I will uh, let you know when I'm going to do it. So we can, if you want to jump in and, and say hi, that would be great. I'd love to have you join me for my, my uh, tool tip with a haymaker saw. That'd be fantastic. Um, so coming up, we've got the uh, kinetic rivets class. That's going to be awesome. Um, Julia is going to be doing all kinds of rivets that are designed to move, that are designed to uh, hinge and swing and connect things together so that they are um, really cool opportunities for uh, pieces and toys and um, uh, parts of jewelry, bracelets and things so that you can have hinges and all kinds of good stuff. So the Kinetic Rivets class, and that's coming up on 1023. There's still a couple of seats available for that. Also, Sticks and Stones. Sticks and Stones is going to be great if you are working with uh, mixed material assemblage like I do. Uh, I use a lot of um, found objects. I use a lot of you know hair, teeth, glass, bones, um, reflectors, lenses, and cold connecting those parts together uh, using um, uh, adhesives and finding the right adhesives to use and how to shape and cut those pieces and drill those pieces. A lot of times that can be one of the biggest challenges in working with mixed materials. So the Sticks and Stones workshop is going to be coming up on October 30th. So if you have a chance to join me, please do. Um, we'll be working with a variety of organic and man-made uh, materials, including things like ceramic um, and you know, leather and bone and uh, just pretty much in shell and anything you can think of. So um, finding ways to sort of attach it all, put it together and come up with parts that um, make sense and are kind of fun. So I hope you can join us for Sticks and Stones on October 30th. Also, we've got uh, more stone setting series coming up. I've got the um, Simple Wire Baskets coming up on November 6th. I've got uh, Rolling Mill Essentials also coming up on November uh, 13th. Now, a lot of you are like, I can't afford a rolling mill. It's too big. I can't fit it in my studio. Wherever would I get one? Um, listen, rolling mills don't have to be expensive. Actually, they can be very affordable and they can be an indispensable tool in the jewelry studio. If you're trying to make a pattern, if you're trying to thin down a sheet of metal, if you're trying to shape a piece of metal, if you're recycling your metal, um, a rolling mill can be a, a really amazing tool to be able to help you get that done. And there are some very, very inexpensive alternatives for a small studio that are only a couple of hundred bucks. So if you have a flex shaft in your studio that you paid a couple of hundred bucks for, you can also get a rolling mill in that same price range. They're not too terribly expensive and they can be extremely versatile and just absolutely invaluable. So I'm gonna actually show you mine that is a, an economy mill that has the interchangeable rollers, show you how to change it out, how to set it up, who makes what and why, what the differences is are between the gear ratios, um, and what you need to be able to do to set up a rolling mill in your studio and why, why you even have it. And do a couple of demos on things like um, uh, patterning and uh, some options for that as well. So I hope you can join us. And that again is going to be on um, November 13th and just in time for your Christmas wish list. <laughs> so if you're like, I don't know what rolling mill to get, I don't have a rolling mill, this is the one to take so you can figure out what rolling mill is going to work best for your studio and you, what's affordable, what you like, and then add it to that wish list for Santa. <laughs> so um, yeah, and then we've got working in gold fill coming up too. So all those things are, are new on the schedule. We've got classes coming up into next year now. We have some guest artists that are going to be doing classes like uh, resins and more. So I hope you can join us for that. Um, but uh, again, the tool tip for today, I highly recommend the Jeweler Maker's Log. Um, sketch your ideas, finalize your designs, track your time and your materials, and find a way to help price things. So, it's available on Amazon. I highly recommend it. Um, so my tool tip for the day is keep track of your stuff <laughs> so you can price it and know what you did later and go back and do things. So, anyway, uh, short tool tip. 
I hope you guys have a great day. Um, you'll uh, see some more videos coming up from Las Vegas. And again, if you see um, or know anybody, have some uh, some guy, somebody that's really cool, or if you're in Las Vegas, DM us, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll try and uh, say hi and maybe spotlight you on our uh, Little Metal Foxes uh, Instagram. So um, have a great day. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.